Okay guys, so welcome back and uh, we are about to venture into the mountainous second level of theory, music theory, which is the major minor key system and that is the overriding system by which 99.99% of musicians everywhere acknowledge. What has not been acknowledged is what I've uh, been pounding on over and over again is that there are three systems. Uh, we just finished the first, the Greek modes which is an isolated key system. Now we're going to head into the major minor key system which is no longer isolated, meaning that you can incorporate either notes or chords or both uh, from different keys into one key, into one uh, piece of music with the same root center. Um, so uh, to begin with <clears throat> If you remember your modes, oh, let's see, bad lighting. Yeah, if you remember your modes, roughly here, okay. So in the key of C, you go from C to C, and that, of course, is your Ionian mode, or equivalent to the major scale. And uh, it's a treadmill, so the second step of the scale, we have uh, D Dorian, and that's the same notes of the key of C, but now starting with D as root and so on and so forth down the line. Um, you also must remember that uh, we're not just talking about scale steps here, but we're talking about the chords that sit at those steps. The, uh, the one chord, the two chord, and the three chord. That, that is really of paramount importance. Um, it's the chord that creates the root. It's the chord in a progression that you go home and resolve to, and I'm sure you understand this by now. So what happened when they started interacting keys is they, they created a new system. And what they did is they kept the root chord 1 in the key of C, that would be the C major chord, and the root chord A minor uh, as two possible root chords in a key, and that's it. In other words, all these other modes were eliminated. So now you just have one which is Ionian, and six, which is Aeolian. And make no mistake um, that they did this is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the relationship between one and six is very, very important. I call it the husband and wife of the entire family. The rest of the modes are the kids. <coughs> but uh, as I demonstrated earlier, the one, four, or five relationship of the major chords can be uh, paralleled uh, uh, one, four, five in the minor chords. It actually comes out as six, two, three, but um, it's the same relationship of space between the two chords. In other words, between the three chords. In other words, one to four is a perfect fourth in the major chords. C to F major is a perfect fourth distance. Well, when we take the minor chords, A to D minor is a perfect fourth distance, and then when we take the five chord of the major, one, four to five, one to five, or four to five is a whole step. In the same way with the minors, we, uh, we have uh, A minor acting in this case as 1, D minor as 4, and then E minor is a whole step up from there. So there's an exact parallel relationship between the two sets of uh, chord types, major and minor, okay? But the other modes were completely eliminated, and what that did was, now they're saying, that if I'm rooted, if I have a bunch of chords in the D Dorian mode, you no longer call it D Dorian and you no longer say these chords are emerging from the key of C, you call it the key of D minor, which is completely effed up. It's totally effed up and that was the biggest mistake that ever happened in music theory. Um, but it is what it is. So the way things stand right now, I think it's possible to amalgamate the three systems and blend them together as one one synergistic system, but it would take a lot of work. It would take a lot of research and uh, development and working out. So the way, what we're stuck with right now is the, we have to develop the perception and ability to discern, is this set of chords expressing a mode? Is this set of chords expressing the mi major minor key system? Or is this set of chords expressing blues? And all three have their own laws, rules, and regulations. Now, my conspiracy theory about um, the modes that were thrown out is back in the Greek day, they felt that 
the modes or moods uh, basically that uh, each mode evoked a certain kind of feeling in a human being whether or not that's true I can't really you know testify one thing I will say is that Mixolydian is supposed to be the partying mode and I have mentioned to James Corbett and others before that um, the Mixolydian mode was huge in the 60s from the early 60s on out till uh, the late 60s the Mixolydian mode was used quite a bit and as we know the 60s is renowned for being a huge party which is something I think we could all use these days everybody's so uptight and pissed off it'd be nice to have a big blowout so yeah we have we are stuck now with one and six and now the other difference the big difference is that now when you call something a key you're also saying it's a root so uh, even if I'm doing D Dorian we have to say the key of D minor. Now what are these minor keys? So far in the Greek modes we've only dealt with the major keys and as you know the dominant seventh chord in each major key is kind of the thumbprint of that key. In other words in the key of C G7 exists and it only exists in the key of C and it points to the C chord. In the key of D A7 is there it's only in the key of D and it points to the D chord. Well now with the major minor key system these dominant seventh chords are pointing now to other chords as well. Um, understand that with the advent of temperament, now we're allowed to bring in chords and notes from other keys. So what was allowed by that point was to actually uh, uh, change the structure of the scale. Now the, the major scale itself, the structure was not changed. What they focused on primarily was the minor scales. And um, so Aeolian, what we call the Aeolian mode, um, was tweaked. And we're going to get deeper into this, but I'm just kind of doing a quick overview for y'all. But uh, basically the Aeolian mode, the natural minor mode, or the six-step mode, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, uh, they, uh, I'm going to explain why and what happened. Uh, but basically the seventh step of the Aeolian mode A B C A B C D E F G was tweaked to a G sharp before then you couldn't have done that because the G sharp would have sounded terribly out of tune but now with the advent of temperament it sounds somewhat in tune so uh, that one note change screwed everything up entirely not in a bad way because we love these minor modes and the sounds they, they bring. I know when I, whenever I teach a student uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, harmonic minor mode, that be, suddenly becomes their favorite mode. It's got an exotic quality. It sounds Middle Eastern. It sounds Spanish. Uh, so people like that, you know. Uh, metal guys love that, that particular mode as well. Um, the minor, minor keys of generals, metal guys love it. It's darker, moodier, you know. Um, then later on, after that sixth, uh, seventh step was tweaked, later on they also tweaked the sixth step, which A, B, C, D, E, F became F sharp. So now the scale became tweaked to A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Now, when you think about it, all the chords that once emerged from the key of C are going to change entirely. They're gonna, you're going to see chords that didn't exist before. In fact, what's called the augmented triad didn't actually exist until this scale was created. I don't know that's like a literal historical fact but it, it couldn't have existed in the Greek modes we know that because you couldn't the structure of the scale didn't allow you to build the chord it couldn't exist. Um, so now we have find the emergence of new chords. Uh, so now what happens in this situation is we could mix modes. In other words, I could mix D Dorian with D Aeolian and take chords from both sets. D Dorian is from the key of C, D Aeolian is from the key of uh, F. So basically you're mixing the keys of C and F together. This couldn't have happened in the, in the Greek days because again, uh, temperament wasn't there and it wouldn't have allowed it to sound good. But now it does. Uh, not only mixing modes, but modulation. Uh, modulation within one piece of music from this key to that key to that key. 
which can be either uh, incredibly dramatic and wonderful, it can be sinuous and sneaky, as in the whole step modulation in Penny Lane. It goes down a whole step uh, from the key of C, well actually it's in the key of B, goes down a whole step uh, from the key of B when it goes to the chorus, it goes to the key of A, and it's so wonderfully seamless. And for a composer, it's not, getting to a different key is easy. The hard thing is trying to get yourself back. And when uh, Paul or John, I think they both do it at one point in the song, saying, meanwhile, back, that announces the original key you come back to uh, uh, the key of B in that. So, um, modulation, mixing of modes, because why we're incorporating other keys, scale tweakery, right? You can tweak the scales now because you're allowed to bring in notes from other keys, which uh, led to a lot of, quite honestly, BS. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of musicians that get into theory uh, think about all these exotic scales, but you know, really, a scale is a scale is a scale, and quite honestly, um, these scales, if you're not using them lawfully according to what the chords are expressing, they tend to sound full of shit. They sound a little bit pretentious and full of it. So I'm not big on that whole uh, exotic scale thing. Um, not to say I'm so conservative that I wouldn't use uh, an exotic scale, but I definitely need to have a reason for it. There should be a firm grounding in musical law to use these exotic scales. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of uh, a lot of flack for that, but you know, bring it on. I don't care. Uh, so major minor key system. Uh, so we're talking about mixing modes, modulation, scale tweakery chord tweakery, okay, the flat nine chord couldn't have existed uh, without, uh, without temperament and the major minor key system. And strangely enough, I discovered that the one essential chord that kind of expresses blues harmony within one chord is the sharp nine chord. Some of you guitar players mo might know that as the Hendrix chord. Well, actually, it's called a seven sharp nine. Thank you very much. But... Uh, and it was used way before Hendrix. My God, the Beatles used it even in the early days. Um, I think the song You Can't Do That has a sharp nine, at least a harmony, sharp nine harmony in there. Uh, so these chords couldn't have existed. Flat nine, sharp nine, uh, 13 flat nine, all these kind of uh, advanced jazz chords couldn't have existed until uh, the major minor key system was brought about. So uh, we're going to look in, now the role of the seventh chord changes. Uh, what creates a minor key, let, let me just, well, I'll go deeply into it and get really under the hood and show you all the uh, elements of everything. But just as a rough sketch, uh, for example, in the Greek mode days, G7 resolved to C and that was that. G7 couldn't resolve anywhere else. I mean. You could move to another chord within the key, but it won't have that resolution feeling necessarily. Closest would be G7 to A minor, maybe. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, so with the advent of the major minor key system, G7 could not only resolve to the chord C major, but it could resolve to the chord C minor. All right, so now the seventh chord is no longer the thumbprint of what key you're in because it could possibly be belong to uh, two other different keys, and within the melodic minor, uh, G7 is, sits as the four chord in the melodic minor scale, so now everything gets all screwy. So, point being simply that the role and function of the dominant seventh chord uh, became more and more sophisticated and complex uh, through the major minor key system, and we will explore all of that. And uh, because of the, that complexity, uh, well, it took till the 20th century, maybe late 19th century, uh, for blues to start to establish itself as a, as a form, as a musical form. Um, so, there was a kind of evolutionary process uh, going from the classical days on out to blues. And like I said, there's a very strange thing that uh, the, the seven sharp nine chord I mentioned exists because of the, the major minor key system. It exists because of the harmonic minor scale blending with the natural minor scale. 
Uh, the sharp nine chord cannot be created from any one scale unless you create an exotic scale that has two half steps next to each other, which to me is entirely BS. That doesn't qualify as a scale. It qualifies as a scale with a passing tone. But uh, you can have two half steps next to each other to create a valid harmonic scale. Uh, so anyway, yeah, point being that uh, the blues had could only evolve after a certain amount of time passed with the major minor key system. And it, to me it's very interesting that somehow it connects with these uh, so-called minor uh, keys. Now, let's get some terminology straight too. Um, I talked about relative major, relative minor. That would be the one chord and the six chord respectively. Uh, in the uh, major minor key system, I, in order to clarify, I call it special relative major and special relative minor. The reason being that in the Greek modes, you actually all of the modes are relative to the key you're in. So I like to call this particular relationship one to six as special relative, okay? And we're also going to run into the term uh, special parallel. Uh, so, yeah, where am I going? I have no idea. Um, any case, the seventh chord took on a new role uh, and had more jobs to do and created more color, more tension, more interest uh, when the major minor key system was evolved. So we're going to be looking into what exactly that dominant seventh chord does. We're going to look into, oh, one thing I wanted to say. Uh, in the classical terminology, which I really have a problem with classical terminology, I think it's perfect, pur purposely made to sound academic and high-minded and uh, more cultural than thou, and it doesn't explain anything. I've mentioned this with the half-diminished chord. What the hell does half-diminished mean? I have no idea. I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, half-diminished, but in jazz I say minor 7 flat 5. That tells me what's going on. It's a minor uh, seven chord with a flatted fifth, nice and easy. Um, and in any case, the Aeolian mode was the starting point for these two other harmonic and melodic minor modes to evolve. Now, in classical terminology, they call the harmonic and melodic minors modes, which is ridiculous terminology. I call it modalities, which refines the term. It, in other words, the harmonic and melodic minor are modalities of the Aeolian mode. And here's another thing. These three types of scale, natural minor or Aeolian, harmonic minor and melodic minor, can blend together as one gigantic big-ass scale. Yes, technically it's not a scale, but what it does uh, when you, within one piece of music, uh, use chords from these different modalities, the Aeolian, the harmonic and melodic minors, uh, you create a whole bunch of chromaticism, a whole bunch of very uh, interesting uh, harmonic movement as well. So those are the things we're going to be exploring. Uh, we're going to look at the evolution of the uh, minor scales and how it came about and why. Uh, you know, what led to its coming into being. Uh, we will explore, um, uh, again, the, the um, multiple uses of... Uh, dominant seventh chords, um, and basically that's where it sits. I mean, uh, the dominant seventh chord, like I said, its role changed dramatically after the major minor key system was developed, and the scales themselves and chromaticism also changed gr dramatically because of all of this. So that's what we'll be exploring coming up. But trust me, these few elements I'm bringing up, well, they tweak the scale, well, now you have a seventh chord that could go to a minor instead of a major. It seems like a simple deal, but what it does is creates a mass of complexity and sophistication. And I'm hoping to take this really step by step by step. What I'm very, very happy about is that um, I've had a few reports from some of my viewers that said, you know, I've been scratching my head over the modes for years, but you made it clear to me and I understand it now. That makes me so happy. As a teacher, I want to know that people are actually learning. So I'm going to take these uh, steps, very small steps, as we go through this stuff so you're guaranteed to understand it. All right. And uh, now just a couple of other things, uh, you know, just to 
as far as my business as a music teacher, and by the way, um, see that back there, that's the Venice Roasters, that was my band. I have some videos with those guys uh, on my YouTube channel. In any case, uh, yeah, I don't have the address, the URL in my mind right now, but I decided to blow off the Patreon thing because it's just too hairy. I, I just don't want to spend hours trying to figure out how that site works. Um, so, very simply, there is a paypal.me forward slash vincognito. I think that's the address. paypal.me forward slash vincognito. If you'd like to contribute to my work, um, please feel free to, uh, you can do it through PayPal at that address, and you don't have to have a PayPal account in order to do it. Uh, I certainly welcome the money, you know, as we all do. Um, what else? There was another thing I wanted to bring up. What was it? Uh, let's see. The PayPal thing. Okay, I can't remember. I'm getting old. All right, guys, so I think that'll be it for today. Just a quick overview about uh, the waters you're about to get into. And trust me, they'll, they're deep, so, you know, uh, don your scuba diving gear, and we'll get down into it. I know it's been a little bit spotty uh, getting these videos out lately. I was on a roll, and I have to admit, a lot of that roll was because I had a sudden influx of new viewers, and I, I thought, well, i got to put something out for these folks, and now it's kind of like the wave has kind of drifted ashore and, you know, dissipated, so I lost a little bit of inspiration for doing it. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, the other thing was simply, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to you know mention uh, your question in the comments section, and uh, we'll see what we can do about it. You know, uh, if I have time, I'll even make a special video to try to help you understand. What you should do is, if you really want to understand this major minor key system, I need you to be able to say to yourself, I get the Greek modes, I understand them fully now. Uh, so go over those uh, the first level. This particular video is going to be put into a new playlist that'll be level two music theory, uh, the major minor key system. And I guess, I guess that's it. I always regret when I turn off my camera because then it's like, oh, I should have told them about this. But you know, whatever. Also, you might notice that I repeat myself a lot. I, you know, I I tend to repeat myself. Well, I don't review my videos except once after I've finished making it. And I forget what I've said in the other videos. But look, that's not a bad thing. And it's not that I'm uh, developing Alzheimer's. It's not a bad thing because repetition is really what help, helps this stuff to sink in. So I don't think I'm repeating enough of this stuff where you're rolling your eyes saying, oh, this shit again. At least I hope not. All right, so that'll be it for today, guys. Like I said, it's been spotty. I'm going to do my best to stay steady on. Um... I've been busied up with other stuff and uh, been a little, got the holiday blues. I'm really padding this one. Actually, I hit a horrible depth of depression, but let's not go there. Feeling a little better now. Uh, Kratom does help. Thank God for that stuff. Uh, I'm on it right now, and it puts me in a good social mood. Uh, and the funny, the irony is, I'm here looking at myself in a computer, talking to myself. Uh, so that's my big social stuff for the day. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it. I know I'm forgetting to tell you something, but I'll make a note of it and put it in the next video. You all have a great day. I invite your friends who are interested in music theory to come down and watch my videos uh, to uh, subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it and uh, because it's making me so wealthy, you know. Uh, all right, you guys, take care and have a good one, and Happy New Year!